Hello and thanks for joining in. This is part two of the like and subscribe series. We animated the bell in the last lesson, so now we need to animate the text from subscribe to subscribed, all from the same text layer. As you can see, I'm in the resource project file. If you don't have that, check the link in the description for the bell animation and you can download it there. Okay, so I'll turn off the bell. Turn on this group and turn off the button layer. We don't need it for now. I'll bump the scale here to 500 so we can see everything better. Select the text and add a sequence text behavior. Okay, we'll add scale. Set the value to zero. So now we have just a normal sequence text for our settings running the full duration of the project, which is 300 frames at 30 frames a second. We just want this last character animating. So to do that, we are going to open up the range settings here and choose character. Now by default, the start index is at zero and the end index is at one, which is exactly what we need. Uh, but right now, the range is selecting just the first character in the string. We want to isolate the last character instead. So all we need to do is reverse the range. Now from here, we want to set the frame for the animation. We can use the end offset for that. Remember our project is 300 frames, so for example at 2 seconds, which is 30 frames, 300 less 60, 2 seconds, 60 frames, gives us an offset of 240. We also want this animation to be quick, just one frame, so we'll set the spread to zero. Alternatively, because we are animating from a value, we could also just trim the behavior to this out point. And we're all done. That is all there is to it. I will just put the scale back to default and turn on the other layers and groups because in the next lesson uh, we're going to start animating everything together for our like and subscribe title. Okay, but before we go, I'll just present you here with some text animations that are all done with the range selection tool that we just used. I was going to go into more detail about how the range selection works, but I think I'll save that for later. I am planning to share a few lessons on keyframing with the sequence text behavior, and I think that will be the better time for it. But as you see here, just as a highlight, these are all done with the range selection and running keyframes, so we can do things like this, and I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you. Right, thank you very much for taking the time to join in. Bye for now.